Hey peeps, it's Jesse L. Dessert Geek, and today I'm going to the Georgetown Trailer Park Mall to meet with Deep Sea Sugar and Salt, who have a spot here. Because why not go to Georgetown on a Saturday in the cold to eat cake? Taste this time! I was originally going to shoot the entire thing at Deep Sea Sugar and Salt. There was a problem. There's a lot of music going on. It was very loud. I wanted to be able to eat my cake, and so we're eating it here. All right, this beautiful giant thing of cake. This is the lemon cream, which just look at those gooey layers. I mean, this is magnificent. I mean, I'm just so excited about this. I should probably tell you what's in this cake. So, this cake has ricotta olive oil cake, lemon curd, lemon mascarpone cream, and a lemon cream cheese frosting. I know, my life, so challenging. Let's give it a shot, eh? Oh my gosh, that's so fun! It's really tangy and mellow at the same time because of the smoothness of the cream cheese versus the tanginess and brightness of the lemon curd. And dear goodness, the cake is not dry. The cake is not dry, oh my yes. Yes, yes, seriously, dry cake is everywhere. You don't want it to be. This will be inhaled the second I finish filming. Next up, we have the London Fog. Which, again, I'm going to their website because there's a lot going on here. We got Earl Grey cake, honey and Earl Grey syrup, bergamot mascarpone cream, and cream cheese frosting. Dang. You can also smell the bergamot from here. You just smell the citrus. You don't smell the tea as much, but it's sort of there at the end of the smell, but it is. You can smell this guy a mile away. This is beautiful. Also, check out how gorgeous this frosting is. It's really, really beautiful in person. I mean, this is a happy making cake here. Grab a piece. Oh, that is so soft and subtle. So first you get the bergamot and then just breathe bergamot. So I feel like I'm breathing orange flowers. And the cake itself is so moist and so delicate. And now I'm breathing tea. I'm okay with this. This feels like drinking a cup of tea in solid form. And it's just so melting on the tongue. Next up, we have, like seriously, you cannot tell here how hefty these slices are. This thing is giant. This is the lemon marmalade and molasses cake. And you can just smell all of the molasses. It smells like gingerbread now. And just that hefty thing of cream cheese frosting. I love also that the marmalade you can't really see very well here. Let's pull a bit out so you can see it. It's really chunky. So you got this extra chunky, it's gonna, you can tell it's gonna be soft, it's gonna be sweet and tangy and tart and this really hefty, dense brown cake. Let's grab a bit of the cream cheese, a bit of the cake, a bit of the marmalade. That's a good bite. This cake here feels the most like a study in contrast because the molasses note is there as this deep darkness and then you've got the brightness 
from the marmalade that's not quite bright but tart and that acid hit that it really needs to balance out the flavors and then the cream cheese frosting just sort of melds it all together so it's not as intense as you might think like if you end up having the molasses cookie from molly moons this season it's way more intensely molasses this is more like eating a soft molasses cookie with some tartness or even closer to having like an actual traditional fruit cake where it's soft rather than the dense hockey pucks I think if you like the idea of fruitcake, but not the actuality of standard Americanized fruitcake, you will be in love with this because it is so just, again with the word redolent, I'm really liking that word this week, but it just, it's a depth of flavor without being in your face about it. And it's really enjoyable. This is just delightful. Also before I forget, serious shout out the fact that most of the things here have cream cheese frosting because Cream cheese frosting does not get enough love in Seattle and makes me really, really sad. Last but not least, this is the one I'm the most concerned about for me because it's the nine pound porter cake. You heard that right, porter. I'm going to eat a thing with alcohol on this channel. So this is dark chocolate cake, nine pound porter beer, and semi-sweet ganache, which, smell your food. I, I just smell chocolate, also gotta give a shout out to the gold leaf going on here because this is an adorable tall cake in person. It is, I can smell just pure fudge and me in the air, which makes me happy I'm not smelling alcohol. It is such a dense looking cake though. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Cake time. That did not go as expected. There is a note of the porter, it's kind of just frontal and I get like a little pop of it but then you just get fudgy cake it's there but it's not overpowering the cake really gets to take center stage this is a lot better than I expected it would go and the cake's also really nicely fluffy and the ganache is nice and dense and yeah I still wouldn't necessarily reach for this one but I'm glad I tried it and it's a really nice execution of utilizing alcohol in a not overpowering way in a cake because I do feel like a lot of them tend to be just like in your face about spirits or beer or being infused into something. This is just like, hey, it's here. It's chilling. If it's not your game, it's not gonna be overpowering. It's just here. I, I do think if someone's looking for booze in their cake, this isn't the one to go for either. I feel like this is like, you want something where the cake is enhanced by adding that flavor. This is what you're gonna go for. Um, I'm supposed to pick a favorite now at this point in the game, aren't I? Oh dear. Oh dear. Normally I would have a clear favorite. When I do a lot of these review type things, even at home, even before YouTube, I usually have a clear victor. I do not here. Seriously. Okay, my top two would probably be the lemon cream versus the Earl Grey, but the molasses and marmalade combination was also really fun. I think the only one I wasn't like in love with is the porter, but I saw that coming and wasn't too surprised with that for me because I don't drink alcohol. Someone who doesn't drink alcohol is not gonna feel that excited about an alcoholic cake. But I didn't actually hate it either and I would eat it again. Which says a lot for me because I really am sensitive to alcohol. I'm not gonna pick. They're all good. Eat your freaking cake. Like seriously, don't even bother with my suggestions here. Just like get what sounds good. Because you're gonna like what you get. And of course, I did find out that they offer sliver samples. So if you're nervous or on the fence, ask because you'll probably figure out what you want that way, way better than me telling you what to get. There were talks of other flavors that come up. Apparently she just like makes things on a whim and I don't know what I want now. If she made something that was chocolate raspberry, I'd probably just get that because that's one of my favorite flavor combinations for dessert, but I can't choose. I'm not gonna make you choose. So thank you again to Charlie and Lindsay for letting me take over the tiny airstream that is your space. Cause I know having someone doing B-roll is really hard. So thank you. This is not sponsored. They just gave me all the cake and said, have at it. I would love to hear from you now in the comments below. What is your favorite cake or have you tried their cake? And what was your favorite cake from them? Because clearly I need to try everything now. I got a problem. I'm gonna have to get more cake. As always, I'm Jess Halzerke, hoping that you get to try all the things and I'm gonna go eat everything that's sitting in the corner right now. Lead us!